Installing a server operating system is rarely the destination. It's the starting point to solve a larger problem. With FreeBSD interest on the rise, here at the foundation, we thought it would be fun to see just how quickly you can get started with FreeBSD. There is the obvious way of downloading the installation medium and answering a few quick setup questions. But did you know the project also produces a number of handy virtual machine images? We've tested three ways of using those images. There's a blog post linked in the description below. But in this video, let's take a look at one of the methods using QMU on an Apple MacBook. Before we start, there are a couple of prerequisites. You'll want to download the latest FreeBSD production image and you'll want QMU installed. Details are in the blog post, but in short, we've used Homebrew on the Mac to install QMU and we've got the 14.2 ZFS root ARM64 VM image. So let's go and see how fast we can get up and running. Okay, we have our basic image downloaded, ZFS root, you'll notice there. Uh, we've unexpanded it already, and we're just about to resize the disk image just so that when the virtual machine first boots, it will automatically expand the ZFS pool. Now, I'm actually gonna start the timer from here just to see how long this step takes as well. So um, off we go. Okay, this is going to be completely machine dependent, of course. Oh, look, that took seconds, actually, <laughs> if that. So the next thing we're going to do is actually start the virtual machine. We're going to run it under QEMU. Um, I've got a small wrapper script here already prepared to do this. This is what it looks like. Uh, it will be shared in the GitHub repository, the link of which will be in the description below. So let's run that virtual machine up and see how long it takes us to get to a prompt. Not going to waste 10 seconds there, so I'll hit enter very quickly. Okay, there we go. What was that? A few seconds. Uh, so we actually have the default virtual machine already sorted here. Now, there's not a lot that um, you can do with that, although it is a complete operating system, so there's plenty of tools already installed. Uh, but I like to install some extra little tools just to make life that little bit more comfortable on a day-to-day -day basis. To aid that and make life a little bit simpler, I've made an Ansible playbook, uh, which is also shared in the GitHub repository below, and I talk about it a little bit more in the blog post link also below. Now I've mentioned that Ansible playbook, you want to see it, don't you? Okay, so this VM image by default is very simple. It only has a root user with no password on it, which you'll want to change, of course. Um, so one of the things that we'll need to do for starters is add an ordinary user. Yes, we could run the Ansible playbook against the root user, but um, force of habit means that I like to have a normal user in there. So here's my little crib sheet for these couple of things that I want to do to get it up and running with a user in, and then we can hand over to Ansible thereafter. So let's do these basic bits and pieces. A couple of packages that we just want. Nice thing about the package system is the package tool itself isn't installed. So when you run package the first time, it bootstraps itself, which is quite neat. Okay, we'll let that install. And I'm gonna use uh, Duas. Uh, mainly because it's um, considerably smaller than sudo, so I quite like the simplicity of it these, uh, these days. I'm going to add myself uh, a user in with a random password, which we'll want in just a second. And I'm going to put my SSH key in place so that we can do everything without passwords thereafter. So that's ready to run the playbook now. Let's go down to here and run our playbook. I've got another little um, helper script here that I just use for running the playbook. Saves a little bit of typing, doesn't it? I'm going to limit this to just the QEMU host. The only reason I limit it is because this particular inventory has other hosts in it. 
sneak peek. Oh, what's that other host name called? You'll find out more about that in a future video. Let's run the Ansible playbook. Uh, this first thing that you'll notice there about um, running ZFS Arc and changing the size of it. Uh, although I found the FreeBSD image running under QEMU on the Mac to be absolutely rock solid, um, the ZFS Arc does use all of the memory that it can. And I have found that if you leave it at the default to do that, sometimes QEMU is, uh, is, is crashing. So um, reducing the memory size that the Arc can use down a little bit uh, seems to bring back the stability. So there's a few little daily commands here that I use all of the time that you may or may not recognize. But I just want to highlight one because I discovered this recently and I now can't live without it, which is FZF. Well worth looking that up and having a, a tinker with it. There we go. Now let's go and hop into the host and see what it looks like. have this full size there we go uh, I've got a nice little prompt um, and I've already configured FZF to be in place fantastic so there we go okay so right now you're probably asking the obvious question what can I do with that well this is the start it's the foundations we've got follow-up videos and blogs coming looking at useful topics like bulletproof system upgrades FreeBSD jails and using them to create secure environments for common applications like web servers. If you'd like to see a video on getting FreeBSD running quickly on Amazon Web Services, you can click on this. And if you'd like to see other videos in this series, you can click on this. But that's all for now. Bye bye.